Tomorrowland and Absolute share a vision of a more equal and diverse tomorrow. Actively pursued to their co-created platform, United We Dance, and its Diversity and Inclusion Committee. This year, they have united to strengthen human connection and promote cross-cultural exchange globally to help combat loneliness. Welcome to the United We Dance podcast. My name is Camille Polly, and over the next six episodes, we'll invite you to get to know some of the many Tomorrowland artists on a more personal level. Get ready for candid discussions about human connection, personal stories, and inspirational chats. Special, talented, tall and handsome. I think he's from Belgium. This was back when he was like trance. Uh, now he's a lot more pop, which you know I still like, but I know his track, maybe Cloudbreaker. He's a very good mix up with his sets uh, and he knows how to throw a good party. And he loves the crowd and works with the crowd. Uh, Powerball, energy. <laughs> we call them the OGs, the, the originals of Tomorrowland, yeah. Bass, nostalgia. He's a real Tomorrowland legend. It's always heartwarming to hear the people of Tomorrow talk about their favorite artists, isn't it? I can say welcome to the studio, Eve V. Hello, thank you. Thanks for having me. <laughs> People are liking it outside <laughs> of our podcast studio now. Um, it, it's not the first day that you're here at Tomorrowland. You nope. played mainstays, ye yes, mainstays yesterday. Tell me all about it. How was it? It was amazing. It was hot. <laughs> the temperatures were really wow. But uh, even then, I enjoyed myself. Uh, yeah, I was looking forward to it the whole year and... Uh, yeah, I premiered a lot of new music and I'm very happy with the feedback. So, uh, yeah. Super. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> nice, nice. It's always a great spot to plug new music and see how it goes, yeah, right? Yeah, for sure, for sure. Yeah, it's, it's definitely one of the shows a uh, year where you work at and uh, yeah, you, you see that you have a lot of new music ready. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you, you came prepared. <laughs> of course, of course. We have to. <laughs> yeah. Today you're playing Planaxis. Yeah. You're doing a classics Tomorrowland set. What does that mean? Yeah. Oh, I think energy, energy from beginning till end. Uh, it's uh, for me, the classics of Tomorrowland, like the real vibe of Tomorrowland, all the songs that people think about when they think about the festival. And uh, yeah, I love to play that, really. It's an uh, unbelievable uh, vibe over there and I uh, can't wait. Let's rewind it back now. You yourself have become one, somewhat of a Tomorrowland classic as well, because you, <laughs> well, well, you could say so old. no, 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 no. It's a compliment. It's okay. a compliment. Yeah. Being part of something um, that is now celebrating its twentieth anniversary and being a huge part of that history is something I think you should, you know, not take for granted and celebrate. How how do you, do you look upon that? history no for sure and like you said i don't take it for granted so uh i'm i'm always honored to be here and um yeah time flies to be honest because if i think about the first time i was here uh yeah wow what a what a story we we made and uh what an evolution the festival uh it's unbelievable unbelievable never expected it to be what it is now to be honest uh I'm super happy to be part of it, a small part of it, and and still, I'm still able to perform here, which is, uh, yeah, a dream we, coming true. <laughs> we talked with a couple of artists throughout this podcast, and a question that I have for you, because you know, you know, you you also have a very long long history with Tomorrowland, is what makes it so unique. I think most of all the crowd. Uh, and of course, yeah, the production and what they do at Tomorrowland, even from the beginning, I think a lot of people always say, oh, uh, imagine if we do this, imagine if we do that. But Tomorrowland, they did it from the <laughs> beginning. Uh, and yeah, what they did is unbelievable. They made uh, yeah, like a Disneyland for grown-ups. Everything is possible here. If you go to the toilet, to the stage, you order a burger, it doesn't matter. It's always something special. There's always... in details that you wouldn't expect and uh yeah tomorrowland just stands out of it and um the crowd as well i think the crowd is appreciated and uh yeah when you walk around here when you play here the vibe that you feel here the the unity everybody's united everybody's happy to be here finally they were counting down the whole year and they're part of tomorrowland and that's what you really feel as a as a dj as well and it's uh it's a very pleasant and actually easy crowd to play here uh, because, yeah, everybody's ready for a party and, and, and to enjoy life and celebrate life. So, yeah, that's uh, 
a dream for a DJ. <laughs> yeah, a very yeah. positive. Pe people are here with a very positive yeah. feeling. Yeah, for and sure. um, tapping into the fans now a little bit. We all know that for artists connecting with their fans is very important, but it's um, also um, a challenge to do so when there are so many of them spread out throughout the world. How do you stay connected to your fans? Well, I actually try to handle, for example, my social media myself. Um, I always try to uh, to react uh, when, when people send me messages. Uh, it's not always easy, but I try. Uh, but also, for example, if I have a show here and people texting me like, I'm coming later today. Yeah, I, I'm sure like later today when I play at Planaxis, I see a few faces that I know from, uh, from, from my socials. And, and also during my set, I really like to interact with the crowds. Uh, that's why I, pr I actually prefer to stand th the closer to the crowd, the better, not too far. Of course, the main stage is a different story, but, uh, but I, I'm sure today, today uh, at the Plan Axis, I'm going to be a little bit closer to the crowds. And that's when I always feel that I play the best, like good interaction with the crowd. In that interaction, is that something that you really had to grow into? Yeah, for sure. I think even when I started as a DJ, like many years ago, I was actually quite uh, <laughs> shy, to be honest. Yeah. Uh, but now uh, <laughs> people are... We've already. got some crowd outside of our studio. See you Thank guys you so much today. for coming. <laughs> <laughs> no, but actually now, if I don't have interaction with the crowds, I even... It's very hard to explain, but my set doesn't feel like, like complete. Mm -hmm. uh, I always try to bring like the story that I want to bring and I feel if, if I have uh, the feeling that like today I had a good set then at least my feeling is that I, I the whole crowd was in my story I brought them in the same vibe the same uh, yeah story that I wanted to tell so it's mm -hmm. really hard to describe but the interaction f with the crowd for me is definitely one of the most important things of my set would you say that your fans form a sort of community um, yeah, I guess so. Um, yeah, I also really like the like the the spirit of Tomorrowland, like the the unity, and we're here to just be positive and to enjoy life. And that's actually what I try to bring during my shows as well. Sometimes you don't have to make things like too complicated, but uh, at the end of the day, we're here together. We we're here to forget all the. The problems and uh, the bad stuff and we're here to just very easy enjoy life and close your eyes and have the most wonderful day <laughs> in your <laughs> life that's what i try to do every day for myself as well and that makes everything uh, more interesting and more yeah mm. yeah better i suppose <laughs> flip it back you were saying earlier in this podcast that um having the interaction with the crowd is very important and that's you know very nice if you're having that kind of meaningful connection in a live moment but would you say that social media has helped you to connect um and share with your audience in a meaningful way when you're not live yeah of course uh yeah because of social media you can interact with the crowd uh, with your fans like every second of the day so uh yeah i think that makes also like more like you're bounding more with your your fans mm. and uh yeah yeah <laughs> yeah you tap into them on a sort of daily basis if you want to yeah, um yeah. if we look on you know make it a little bit more personal now if we um tap into your career a little bit um in what way have mentors or role models played a part in your development as an artist oh um i don't know I, I think I, I started I started when I was 16. Mm. I'm actually 43 now. So, yeah, I know. You're always 28. Yeah, for sure. In my, <laughs> in my mind, I am. So, uh, no, but I, uh, I think my career, it, it slowly evolves. Um, so I don't know if I had really like role models, but I don't have the feeling that, that I was, um, I was here for like from one day, like, Sometimes, uh, like a producer or a DJ, they make a hit, and I can imagine, like from one day to the other, you're going from your bedroom to the main stages over the whole world. I, I, I'm sure it does something with you, but for me, it, it all felt so naturally, and yeah, I took my time, I guess. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, 
like real role models. Yeah, probably other DJs that I that I met around the world or on tour. Or Maybe asking it a little bit more specifically. Yeah. Is there someone because you, you told me earlier that when you were starting out, you were quite shy and you had to kind of learn how to um, interact with the crowd and be more a little bit more open in a way. Yeah, yeah. Is there someone that helped you throughout that process or is it very much a, a, a case of being very self-aware and then growing into that? Yeah, I think growing into that for sure. But also like actually the Tomorrowland team, mm -hmm. I'm here from the beginning. So they're, they're, they're actually also part of my management uh, and friends. And um, yeah, especially in the beginning of my shows, they, they joined me on tour, uh, on stage even, and um, I think we 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 did that progress together. And because they're so deeply in the music scene, of course they they guided me as well. Uh, but yeah, I, I think I grown into it more because even when I started, it was not uh, a thing to take the mic, for example, as a DJ or to stand on the DJ booth. So also that evolved a bit. Like nowadays, it's more like a show as well, not only DJing. When I started with more with vinyl DJing, some DJs <laughs> weren't even looking at the crowd. So yeah, I, I, I think I was just part of that whole evolution as well. So yeah. You tour all around the world. Um, while DJing abroad for all of these years, I can imagine that you meet lots of people from various cultures, various backgrounds. Can you maybe share a personal story where connecting with someone from a different culture profoundly impacted your your life or your perspective on life? Yeah, for sure. Oh, wow, I've been in so many countries. Uh, but for example, I also have a, a, a few good friends from India, who, mm -hmm. which are actually uh, here at Tomorrowland today. Nice. And I think I, I got to know them for, yeah, I don't know, 10, 15 years ago from my first tour in India. And uh, yeah, life is so different over there, of course. Uh, when I'm there, I'm traveling from one hotel to the other, to the to the shows, the clubs, the festivals. But I, I've been there so many times and you also have some, some spare time to check out the country or the city and yeah, if you see, uh, yeah, especially the, uh, yeah, more like the poor community, for example, then yeah, that makes you think like, it's sometimes it's surreal, like when, when you drive around Mumbai, for example, uh, and you see, yeah, life over there, and, and I'm there from one hotel to the other. Yeah, I, I it's don't. such a big contrast and you find yeah, yourself sure. maybe a little bit in a kind of split mindset between, okay, I'm doing this. I'm here for, you know, bringing entertainment, but then there's also yeah, yeah. lots yeah, of stuff having, happening on the side. No, indeed. And you have that all over the world. And mm. I, I think actually traveling makes you, yeah, thinking more widely uh, yeah. as a person as well. Uh, it keeps your feet on the ground. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. 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 If Which we, is very important. <laughs> yeah, it's, it is very important. And if we now shift our focus to, you know, an, another um, important aspect of, of, of human connections, um, the landscape of the club, the festival and rave scenes has seen significant changes in the last couple of years. I think you, you, we can all agree on this. Mm -hmm. um, uh, in terms of diversity and inclusion, historically there was an overrepresentation of white men it, it just grew that way um, but in the past few years there has been a growing emphasis on a more inclusive landscape with lineups that are more representative um, of different cultures different backgrounds uh, different identities even uh, which are enriching our music scene uh, and our music space of course and eventually that's what we're all here for yep. representing our music lovers better um, could you share your thoughts on this? Yeah, I think it's only a good thing. Um, and I, I actually think we were speaking about social media, but mm -hmm. I think that's also a big part of it. Uh, nowadays, uh, someone can make a track, put it online, and it's a hit. And it doesn't matter where you're from, if you're from Bangladesh or Brazil or China or Belgium, or it doesn't matter. And so the world is also a bit smaller nowadays. And 
yeah, I'm I'm very happy to see that there's more diverse uh, like lineup. For example, uh, even if I look at my own stage next week, V sessions, we have a guy from India, a new talent, and uh, yeah, I'm super happy to bring him there as well. And uh, yeah, not only men but also the women <laughs> yeah, are yeah. finally here. And I think we have a lot of uh, big uh, and good uh, female artists nowadays. So. Yeah, it's only a good thing, and uh, I think it's yeah, it will not uh, it will not stop. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we won't go back. We <laughs> no, won't go no, back. No, 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 no sure. and it's inspiring to see that um, the people in front of the stage are represented in who's on the stage as well. So it's it's an amazing yeah, um, of course, yeah. experience. We talked a little bit uh, about the traveling and about you know being in India for for a long time and 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 going to Brazil and. W- in that traveling maybe is is that the time that you miss genuine connections the most uh yeah you have some moments uh, of course touring is very hectic you go from uh sometimes from the plane to the hotel go on stage sometimes you don't have time to sleep back to the plane uh but um yeah you have you have some moments that everybody adores you the, the whole crowd is there for you and uh, one hour later you're sitting by yourself in the airport <laughs> which is sometimes to be honest not that bad because it also yeah keeps your feet on the ground and also make your uh, your mind a bit more clear mm-hmm. <laughs> um yeah your roots are 20 minutes from here from boom from yeah. the holy grounds um has you know choosing for this lifestyle of working nights, being a DJ, traveling a lot. Um, has it created, um, did it create some isolation in your personal or social life? Uh, yeah, for sure. Um, I'm actually nowadays I, I try to tour, like I try to find more like a balance between my uh, family life and tour life. But let's say like five years ago, I was always on tour. Maybe it was three days at home, five days at home a month. And uh, yeah. Of course, you text with friends or you call them, but 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 it's a different relationship with, that you have with them, and uh, it's quite it's quite hard. Uh, the, the traveling part for me was really really hard uh, mentally, also like the the different time zones, uh, and y- you miss a lot of things. I missed so many weddings of good friends, uh, yes, yeah, so many yeah special occasions, which nowadays I I I, I finally make more time for that. But it was difficult in the beginning because I always thought like I'm I'm on tour I have to do it now to it's now that I have to do it. But it was more like a roller coaster because actually COVID helped me with that mm-hmm. because uh, I I didn't know it but but because of COVID I finally understood that I, I was really in a roller coaster and it never stopped and I was saying yes to everything and I was almost not at home and. <laughs> And yeah, only working to be honest. And I feel much better now. Like my, I think my health is a little bit better. <laughs> and uh, yeah, like the balance between a, a normal social family life and uh, and and yeah, the touring that I'm doing. So yeah. What helps you now to maintain that kind of balance? Because I can imagine that you know, being home, COVID, horrible period for everyone. Um, and then getting back into it, it's easy to fall back into the traps of. Yeah. Saying ye- saying yes to everything True. and being enthusiastic. Oh, finally, I can go out. You know, I can go out again. I can do my thing again. Yeah, yeah. But I think COVID for me was actually I made I made it in a positive thing. Yeah, yeah. Of, yeah. Co- of course, it was not not a, not a good period in our lives. But but I really tur- for me it turned. It was out like very a learning. Positive. Yeah, a learning step. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, because before that I wasn't. Yeah, I was just doing it, and I was mm. never thinking about. I think it comes it comes from the journey that you had. You, you, we we talked about it earlier on that you 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 just came onto this path and you were following it yeah, without true. you yeah. know and thinking the, about it. Maybe true. And also at the end of the day, music DJing is my passion. Yeah. It doesn't feel like I'm working. So yeah. for me, twenty four hours a day it doesn't matter. <laughs> but at the end of the day, I think besides that, you also need like more like a social life as well. Yeah. And COVID made me made me realize that, so yeah. I'm grateful for that. And besides that, I have children now as well, and that of course, yeah, makes, yeah. Then you you really need to find the balance, and uh, that that helps me as well. That's why I don't say yes now uh, 
to everything. So yeah. I, I think my kids now, they keep me more balanced. So yeah, it really yeah. helps. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Same here. Um, we received some questions. We've got some okay. lovely people of tomorrow here Hello. in our podcast <laughs> studio. <laughs> Um, and um, it would be great if you can answer them. Of course. Um, we'll, we'll pass you the mic, guys. And if you could quickly introduce yourself, uh, say which country you're from, and then follow up with a question, um, then we, um, we're good to go. Yes. Uh, yeah, hi, I'm, uh, I'm Luke. I'm from uh, the Netherlands. Um, uh, I, I was mainly wondering, you've been here for like 20 years, you said? Yeah. Yeah, uh, yep. yeah what's, <laughs> the, what's the main difference between uh, like Tomorrowland now and uh, when it started? Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. For me, for example, I think, especially in the beginning, it was, um, oh, how can I say? For example, I was playing at the, at the main stage. My girlfriend was sitting next to me on the stage, which now it's, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's, you can't it's, imagine that no, happening. No, you can't <laughs> imagine that anymore. Um, I think in general, yeah. The festival evolved in so many ways. Now it's so international, so big. Um, but the I think the the the, the spirit, the, the the feel that you have here was actually already here at day one. I think there was always the intention to make the festival what it is now. It's very hard to explain, but that's really how I, I felt here when I walked here around here and when I was playing here. So, um, yeah, but of course the production every year is getting bigger and better. And if, if you look at the main and every year I have the same feeling. If you walk around here or check the main stage every year, I think, okay, how can they top this? What, what, what is next? But every year they do it again. And every year it's, it's even better and bigger and, and yeah. Um, so yeah, everything keeps evolving, but um, at the end of the day, I think the 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 feel of the festival, the celebrating life, the the positive feel, uh, I think that will always stay and is the most important thing. That's the heart of Tomorrowland, I guess. So like basically, it has it has grown, but the vibe has stayed uh, the same. The vibe for sure, and e even yeah, it stayed the same, but of course it it, it it's much bigger now, and it. it and yeah, like I said, now everybody from the world is gathering here and everybody is so happy to be here. We finally have tickets. We're here. We're going to enjoy the weekend celebrating. So, yeah. Right. Thank you. Thank you. Perfect. So uh, my name is uh, Emil from the Netherlands uh, as well. Hello. And uh, you just mentioned you plugged the uh, new music, uh, this festival. Yeah. And I was wondering, like, through all these years when you create new music like what brings you and what kind of moments bring you the greatest inspiration to start start writing the the new tracks or when do you come up with the greatest ideas yeah well it, it depends what kind of music i make but if i make like the club festival kind of stuff i always think about the crowd i always think about myself okay i'm standing here what does the crowd want to hear uh, so I get a lot of inspiration from 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 my shows from touring from seeing other DJs as well um, yeah, you get inspired by, 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 by everything, to be honest. can be, uh, yeah, also uh, when I'm traveling somewhere and I hear a local song or something, that, that can be very inspirational or, yeah. yeah but then how do you bring it together? Do you make notes or uh, recordings? No, but, but I'm working like uh, every day I'm working on music. So if I, if I feel something, I'll, I'll take it directly to the studio uh, so, uh, and it's also a process. Huh? So uh, maybe today I'm find some, or I think something, oh, let's do something like that. Tomorrow I go in the studio, but even that idea can, can grow to something totally different. It's also a process in the studio as well. So, but I find inspiration in, in everything, to be honest, everything in life. Thank you so much, That's Luke amazing. and Emil, for contributing. Um, Thank you. And um, now let's get back on one of the harder things when it comes to human connections. What do you do when connections are lost or when you face other kinds of like mental challenges? Huh. Um, yeah, then mostly I try to take some time by myself, to be honest, uh, because I have quite a hectic life. And I, I think it's, yeah, I find some time for example, like doing some sports, <laughs> I just need to clear my mind uh, or in music. 
when I'm working on music, I forget all the rest. And uh, it's just me, music. Uh, and that helps me as well through everything. So. When you travel, when you travel and you go in and out of hotels, go in and out of planes, buses, shuttles, and you might experience a, a feeling of deconnection or, or loneliness. Um, what would you recommend to others who kind of experience the feeling of not being connected anymore and not not being connected to yourself, but also maybe not being connecting to connected to others? I had some moments on tour that I that I really felt lost. Um, I, I, I I'm, I'm guessing it's probably different for 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 everyone personally, but um, I th I think sometimes like taking a pause can also help you. But for me, um, I'm standing in, in life like I always try to to take all the positive things. Doesn't matter uh, how bad it goes, and and also. I had moments on tour that I really wanted to go home, <laughs> that I was, yeah, feeling homesick, and I, I, I didn't want to want to perform. But, but, yeah, it doesn't yeah, it doesn't take me that long to I don't know, try to see all the positive things. And okay, I, I don't want to perform today, but I'm here. People invited me. I'm I'm on the other side of the world because of my music, and I, I always try. Or I always find something positive that takes me through, and that keeps me going. So, but I'm sure it, it's it's different for everyone. So it's prob maybe it's easy to say, but for me, yeah. Um, for now, I always found There's something. There's always that a silver lining. Yeah, indeed. But I can imagine that it doesn't work f for mm. everyone like that. Mm -hmm. So uh, I'm actually lucky, I think. But uh, yeah, if it doesn't work, yeah, take whatever you need. Is it a pause? Uh, doing something totally different? Uh, go back to your friend? Fr it doesn't matter. You just have to do what you feel, uh, mm -hmm. what, you, what you need. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for sharing that positive mindset with us today, Evie. Thanks for having um, me. And thank you guys at home for listening. Please stay connected and visit our website, unitedwedance.tomorrowland.com to listen to more podcasts and read more about our United We Dance program. See you next time.